Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. Today I want to talk about something a little different. I actually want to talk about some of the problems that I've had with my Model X. And I'm not doing it to bash Tesla in any way, I'm a huge Tesla fanboy. But I wanted to do it to kind of highlight how great the server centers are at fixing any issues you have, and how Tesla is a lot different than a lot of the other car companies. I want to preface all this by saying that I got a relatively early 90D. I took delivery back in the beginning of May, and it's before Tesla had really worked out all of the kinks and ramped up production. When I took delivery of mine, that's right around the time Tesla had switched to the fixed spoiler instead of the bonus active spoiler. My spoiler wasn't moving, so I just naturally assumed I got a fixed spoiler. But after about a week or so, I started seeing photos online of people that had the actual fixed spoiler and quickly realized that I just had a broken active spoiler. My spoiler was staying in the high speed aerodynamic setting, whereas the fixed spoilers are in the high visibility setting. So to get my spoilers fixed, I called the service center to set up an appointment, and at the time, they were completely slammed with a lot of the really early Model Xs that had issues. And because my issue wasn't a critical one, that it took about four weeks for them to fit me in. So when you go to drop your car off for your appointment, the service center rep's gonna look over your car, they're gonna go over your list of issues, and if you had anything else that you've noticed since you made your appointment, you'll wanna go ahead and let them know at that time. And then they're also gonna do something really cool, they're gonna give you a loaner Model S. Well, it's normally a Model S. Some people have gotten lucky and gotten a loaner Model X, and then occasionally somebody's unfortunate and they get a loaner gasoline car. Uh, I'd personally be a little ticked if I dropped off my Tesla and they gave me a gasoline car for a loaner, but it's still better than you know Ford or Chevy where you take your car in for service and you've got to get your own transportation. You know They're not giving you any loaner car. So I do really appreciate that Tesla does the loaner cars. So after about a week, the service center called me up letting me know my car was ready. Uh, it took a little longer than they thought because they'd never seen that issue and they had to order some parts. Now when you go to pick up your car, they're going to give you a printout of all the things that they did. So they're gonna always check to see if there's any updates for the car. They're gonna check your tire treads, uh, the batteries and the firmware on your, your key fob, and then all the issues that you've had. They'll go through all that stuff and what they actually did if they repaired it or if they didn't find an issue. So it's a nice little printout of all the stuff that the service center has done. And they also email it to you. So you've got a nice little PDF copy you can just save in your email. A few days after getting my car back, I noticed that when the spoiler would close, it didn't actually close all the way, it was shifted too far to the side, and it was pinching the frame and scratching the paint. So unfortunately that meant I had to make another service center appointment. The timing actually worked out to be pretty good, because a couple days after making the appointment, my front door latches started acting up. And at first it was intermittent, I'd go to close the door and have to try it a second time, but by the time I actually went to my appointment, it had gotten so bad that it would take me you know, 10 or 20 tries to get the door to shut and stay shut. Speaking of the front door latches, a lot of the early Model X's had issues where the front door latches failed after a while. But because Tesla is a vertically integrated company, when the service centers are replacing a lot of a particular part, the engineers back in California can actually see that and they can work on redesigning that part so in the future it doesn't fail. And that's exactly what they did with the front door latches. They redesigned it and then they don't have to wait until another model year to implement that change. They actually make changes on a weekly basis to the production line. Tesla said in the past that they're making a lot of improvements on a weekly basis to the production of the vehicles. That means if you buy a Tesla today, it's going to be better or more reliable than a Tesla that was purchased just a couple of months ago. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is the overall fit and finish. Now like I said, I got a relatively early Model X and I thought my fit and finish looked great. I know a lot of the really early ones, they definitely had legitimate fit and finish issues where the panels were misaligned and it just looked bad. And I think for the most part, the service centers did a good job of repairing all those issues that people had. But by the time I got mine, I think Tesla had pretty much worked out all those kinks. I have seen some photos online of people that have taken delivery this summer or even this fall that have been complaining about the fit and finish. And most of the time, those cars look great to me. I don't see any real issues. I think some people are probably just being a little too picky. Now, I understand that Teslas are really expensive cars, but they're not expensive just to be show cars, like a, a Bentley or something. They're expensive because of what they actually are. They've got that huge battery pack in the bottom. That adds a ton of cost. And then all the technology that's in them. The Falcon Wing doors, you know, that's a engineering marvel. They autopilot. They're years ahead of everyone else. Really what you're paying for is all that innovation. And then on top of that, Tesla's reinvesting all their profits to build the Gigafactory and to ramp up for production on the Model 3. So those are really the reasons why 
Tesla is so expensive. It's not to be a show car, which I mean, I know they are, they're amazing cars, but it's really the bigger picture. If you're somebody that was on the fence before about getting a Tesla because of issues you'd seen with the quality, I hope this video kind of did a good job of alleviating those concerns. A lot of the issues you've seen in the past, Tesla's fixed those uh, because of that vertical integration. You know, they see those problems too, and they're able to immediately work on fixes and then get those implemented on the production line. So a Tesla that you buy today is gonna be better and more reliable than one that was purchased a few months ago or six months ago. And don't forget, if you're looking to buy a new Model S or Model X, you can save $1,000 off the price by using someone's referral link. I'll put mine in the description down below, or if you have a buddy that has a Tesla, then feel free to use their link. Uh, you just wanna do it before you actually order your Tesla. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you can see all my upcoming videos. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see, or if you have questions, then feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll do my best to respond and uh, make those videos for you guys. Well, thanks.